G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpeg, the story of a sunken fishing trawler converting into a global expedition and research boat. This week, we have finally crossed the internal strengthening off the list. All of the wings now have their internals finished, so we're ready to skin them. Jess comes down, gives me a hand, we figure out what we're doing with the wing skins, get them aligned, and we start the process of getting the slots cut so that we can weld them onto the ribs. So this is our route run, hopefully the light will show up. I want to start stacking the layers up and get some thickness there because that's a 16mm plate that's welded to 6mm steel so we can start adding a bit more than that single run. So this is the brace that I just welded in um, and this is the hinge that's going to be under tension so that's going to be the strain is going to be essentially pulling along the length of that brace. Um, what I wanted to do is essentially link this corner of the wing up with the strongest part of the wing which is going to be the reinforcing in the centre there so um, yeah I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not going to do anything at the back because the back's under compression I don't think the wing's going to buckle but I do think there's going to be some strain on this front corner trying to pull back as the boat's steaming forward. Before we get stuck into putting the brace on the second wing, I realised that I needed to finish the welding that goes between the 16mm hinge plate and the rest of the wing. So we run a triple continuous bead on all of the surfaces that connect to that hinge plate. There you go, big mongrel sized welds. Did that on both sides so you can kind of see um yeah that lets go oh well we're sinking at that stage this is not a sign of my competitive nature however in saying all of that i now know what i'm doing so i'm going to see how fast i can put one of these braces in the second wing According to the camera, 8 minutes 24 seconds. So I ended up with three runs along this beam here at that, that end and three on that end there. So you can sort of see that flux score comes up really beautiful, eh? Like it's blowing 15 knots and it gives you an idea like just how little porosity you get with this sort of stuff. Um, that's with our shielding gas as well, so there's it's like a dual shield wire. But yeah, pretty awesome stuff. So that's us finished for the internals on those wings. Now it's time to get the skins on. So we're going to get the 4mm steel that we're putting on the back of these wings. And it's been out in the weather for a while, so it's pretty rusty. I'm going to put it on the bench. We'll get the stainless wheel out and we'll give it a good clean up, get most of that crap off. And then we'll put the buffed side down. The outside doesn't matter, it's getting sandblasted. But we'll put the buffed side down so that we have the least amount of rust inside the wings when we seal them up.
if we stay remarkably still, we may actually see the New Zealand working sloth in action. Here we go. Oh, oh, don't spook it, don't spook it. Wow! <laughs> that is Try and squash it if you can. <laughs> yeah, try, try. <laughs> Don't move down quite. So we need to go down this way, halfway down. They're over. Oh, they were over there. Yeah. Are you alright, sweetheart? What's wrong, darling? Getting chased by something. No, yeah. Going over there, isn't it? Is it trick? We managed to save this little bird that is being attacked by two aggressive magpies. Yeah, I'll pull it down. You just, I'll, I'll do the pulling on it. You do the pulling. All right, 
first thing in the morning we're going back down get these skins sorted so we've got a quarter of our skins on two skins per wing one wing half done this guy so what I got to do now is go through and wear probably if I show you that way so where these um, ribs line up down down the uh, skin here I've got a little mark over on this side just here so one there one there and then one here for the 50 mil piece what I need to do is basically mark all the way along that onto the steel plate because I've got to go and drill 10 mil holes so I drill say two 10 mil holes maybe 100 millimeters apart four inches apart um, so it's a three eight hole something like that roughly for Americans um, and then I, I join them with a one millimeter cutoff disc and that allows me to have a slot that's um, a decent width and then also quite long and then I fill that up with weld and one bead all the way around so it'll be from the outside there'll be a slight dimple I'm not worried about filling that up it's not a big deal but it gives me the chance to get good penetration all the way around that weld um, to join the skin onto the rib below it we were working away on the wings yesterday and the camera fell over I lost count actually of how many times it fell over so I made a boat yard modification to my camera stand and um, I'm hoping that this here anode is the correct size anode to use for camera stand um, rigidity seems to be working that's I would rate that at probably 20 knots but you obviously you want to go the next size up anode for you know 30 knot gust something like that So these are the slots that we cut, so pretty straightforward, 10mm hole at each end and then join it up with a 1mm cutoff disc and they line up with the ribs, so the plate's not in line at the moment but you can sort of see they, they run down and align themselves and then that matches right on top of those ribs so we'll be able to weld it to the strongest part of the wing. The first one on any of these things when you're doing it always takes the longest so now that I actually know what I'm doing and I figured out my system and it's sort of getting fast I should be able to blast through the rest without too much drama so given the amount of work that's involved with them I, I underestimated how much work was involved with them I reckon I'll probably get that skin and this one here on today Yesterday we saw one of his family get annihilated by a magpie. I kind of cornered it, so we had to. We shooed them off. I just have to take that little grind off. Um, do you all need your ear mufflers? I'm just going to give two seconds of grind. Ear mufflers. The little bird ended up being watched by a couple of its mates, being fed by it, um, being looked after. It looks like it's going to be okay, just a little bit of a damage wing. Just down and just tack it in like in two places and then, then we'll know where we're at edges for this guy. Yes. Size it now, eh? Yeah, we do it that way, we can size it properly. Perfect. Okay. 
I got a plan. Stop the bloody thing from falling back while I do the other end. There's that lovely gap in the middle there. Yeah, it's going to be good to Not weld. here, but um, you actually do need to cut that line off. Yeah, you end up running a one mil disc yeah, all the way down yeah. and it cleans it up. That's what we did on the underside when we did it. Right, lovely. You right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're pretty, pretty well aligned. Like. So the trick to getting this to fit in easy is basically just run a one mil cut off disc down the slot and then you know that there's going to be at least one millimeter of clearance everywhere so you can join it up um, in an ideal world you'd probably have a bit more so you can allow for um, sort of expansion when you're welding it but we found that one mil seems to work pretty fine you can see right here um yeah, right there. The overlap down here. Yeah, Dan's got to cut that back yeah. just now. So. so I clamp this bit down so that I can get them tight and then I'll just run a disc up there and skim some off this plate here. When you're welding, you want to have a little bit of a gap here. Um, rule of thumb is normally the width of the plate. So if it's a three mil plate, three mil gap, or quarter inch plate, quarter inch gap, that sort of thing. And that allows two things. It allows the weld to go down into the plate so you get a much better um, penetration and a better joint, but you also eliminate expansion. So. Um, these two will get hot and they'll expand so they'll start coming together like that and if they're touching to start with um, You're basically going to end up buckling the plates So by having the gap you mean you end up with a perfect join as well as a, um, the perfect shape You don't have it, you know buckling on you So the next step is pretty straightforward. So you just saw us add these holes and slots um, Linking them all up with the one mil cutoff disc onto this piece of skin here We need to go through and do exactly the same on this guy here. So um, we're going to be marking out where our ribs join on so where they sort of sit underneath the skin We'll do a line right the way along so we know where to drill these holes put the holes in Cut the slots with the one mil disc and um, and then we're ready to start welding these skins onto the wings I made this little jig to help me figure out where to do the slots so that they're all uniform so it's basically a hundred mil that there slot is where I drill and cut the slots. So we've got a 100 mil slot and then a 200 mil gap. 100 mil slot, 200 mil gap, etc. So you end up with a really uniform pattern. So you can sort of see down that one there. They're all basically evenly spaced. You've got a nice uniform sort of grid shape. Um, and that's how we know that we're just going to get the same everywhere. It's not super critical. We could have it out by 10 millimeters. It really wouldn't make any difference. Um, but it just makes it sort of look nicer when it's finished. Damien's named the cat Cat One. It's a boating term from New Zealand. But she remains a yard cat. She comes and goes as she likes. We're not going to be taking her with us, but we're going to be making sure she's well looked after while we're still here. Quarter to eight. All done. So, plan now is to get this sheet and slide it on top of that one at the back so that we can vacuum this end of the wing up, get it spotless, and then we'll swap the sheets over, do the other end, and we can start welding them all on. Cat. Happy little cat. <laughs> He's joining us for our morning work. All right, with both ends now cleaned up, we are ready to start putting this on and skinning it. The plan so that we don't get crazy warpage, we're gonna um, fit them, we'll tack them all in place so they're sitting where they need to and they're all aligned and everything like that. But we'll go through and we'll weld them from the center out. So we'll basically um, choose the center slot here. We'll go through and um, weld that up where it needs to be sitting. And then we'll start working our way out, do that slot, then do that slot, etc. We'll zigzag across. By doing it that way, basically what it means is as the steel heats up, 
not only by doing smaller welds, lots of smaller welds in the slots and everything like that, it basically means you don't get as much heat in the steel, but also as the steel heats up, by welding from the centre out, any expansion in the steel isn't going to pop off your tack welds and do anything crazy. If you if you fully weld at each edge and then try to do the, the inners, as that steel gets hot, it's going to start growing more and that bend's going to get more and it'll lift off your ribs. So ombre peg tech is pretty important to us um, because it basically means that we can film, store all of our data and then we've got that usable to be able to edit with. Now, um, we create an enormous amount of data on this boat, so it's pretty standard for us to create 150 gig to 200 gig of footage a day. Um, we film in 4K, which is, is you know pretty large file size. And the camera we use creates pretty big files because the sensor on it is so big. So to store all of that data, we have to have a pretty robust IT system. So that's what I want to show you. So Scott Jackson helped us um, set up a NAS that he donated as well as a switch. You can see a little switch over the back there um, that controls all of our um, fiber optic network. But he also um, helped us choose and set up the right modem for the boat. So we've got a pretty amazing modem on the boat now. It's an ASUS. Um, wireless modem but it does uh, 4G and 3G as well. One of the other things I wanted to show is this beast. So this beast was created by Peter um, and it's a home built NAS. It essentially looks like a, a normal PC box but it's a storage NAS and what that means is essentially all of our files go onto this and it's an absolute rocket ship. These two systems work in tandem with each other so it's not one or the other it's both that actually run Brewpeg systems and what they work as is essentially a fail safe backup so our files initially come off the camera and they get stored in um, the NAS that Peter created and then from there they um, every night it's backed up to the NAS that Scott built for us as well so what this means is both of them are running RAID 5 so if one of the drives there's four drives on each machine and if one of the drives on every on each machine dies we can just swap it out and put a new one in and we don't lose the data but because we've got that duplicate onto a different NAS or a different storage machine um, it's very very hard for us to lose data which was an issue that we had previously and now that we've got these two systems up and running as well as that modem sort of linking everything together um, the system is just fantastic it's really fast it seems to be bulletproof um, we were having a few teething issues when we first set it up, but man, it's just been amazing. There's also a couple of other people that I want to thank. Um, Madison Kelly, uh, she's helped us enormously with setting up the um, software in the uh, machine that Peter created. And also Dominic, um, he did a heap of work up here as well in terms of setting up the IT gear, um, figuring out uh, issues that we had with the original modem. We had to swap the modem and get a warranty claim and he basically figured out what was going on and um, stored the software and, and yeah, just helped us out enormously with that as well as giving us a huge amount of help with engineering stuff as well when he was up here for a few days. Um, so it's been amazing having like the four of them make this IT system pretty awesome. It's like a, yeah, it's like this amazing, um, backup team for IT, it's like the A team for us. <laughs> it's bloody amazing. Thanks guys so much. So I want to say thanks to Peter and Scott. Um, they've created the backbone of what's running in Brewpeg at the moment and to the other people that have helped support the system, Dominic and Madison and, and got the software and things talking to each other and everything working um, between the four of you. It's been an awesome system and it's really working well. Also a thanks goes out to um, Gareth and Andre, both of them donated uh, via PayPal to support the stabilizer build and um, like awesome donation guys, it was amazing and it's helped us to really push forward on the stabilizers. So I really want to say thanks to you guys for that donation as well. I also want to say thanks to our Patreons. Um, my work has cut back my salary um, as a survival tactic. It was a voluntary thing, um, but basically we have to make sure that the company survives through uh, everything that's going on at the moment. And that essentially means that, um, you know, cash flow into the boat slows down quite a bit. So um, yeah, having, having those donations and having our Patreons, we've had a couple of new Patreons come on board lately. Um, it's just phenomenal. It means that we can actually legitimately keep going on the project. I just want to say thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate it and I love being able to do this and share this. Like Jess and I both feel the same. It's an honour to be able to share this with you guys and we're incredibly grateful. So thank you for your support. You got ice like summer sky If it's my good kill I die And now it starts to rain So let's enjoy it